Hey guys, I'm Sam, that's the Sun Eater, and this is a YouTube channel where we look at how to use batteries and solar to extend the lifespan and range of an old EV. Uh, today's topic of discussion is going to be whether or not it's possible or practical to build a solar powered vehicle charging station on an electric smart car. Um, normally at this point in the video I would do my update and fill you guys in on how the system's been uh, working the last few weeks. I'm going to leave that till the end of the episode this week for reasons that will become obvious at that time. So I had a viewer of the channel reach out to me um, regarding having me help him make a solar powered charging station for his electric smart car. This is Jose. He bought his 2015 electric smart car for under $6,000. The electric smart car only has a 17.5 kilowatt hour battery but Jose only drives about 10 miles a day round trip, so it's perfect for him. Way less vehicle maintenance problems than an ICE car, and the battery is liquid cooled so it will last him years without any significant degradation. It was a, a smart buy for him, but he lives in an apartment. His car is parked at least 30 feet away from you know his apartment uh, that he lives in, so to charge it he has to run an extension cord out of the window of his apartment and plug the electric vehicle charging cable and leave it there for several hours while the vehicle charges. Obviously it's not an ideal situation. He talked to the apartment complex about adding a charging station or even just an outlet in the parking lot area and got well this response. Yeah, yeah I just need level one. Just having a 120 volt socket. Yeah. That costs like 1500 and then I still I get the electricity of the apartment complex, so I have to pay the rate, and so I don't know. That's the thing. And having my own meter, it's like a thousand, seven thousand. Yeah. With my own, and then selling my own company. Yeah. That's why. That's crazy. It's it's yeah. cheaper. It's cheaper to make your own power. Yeah. Than it is to pay the apartment complex yeah. to put in one little plug right yeah. there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You heard that right. Uh, calling the electrician out to run the conduit out to the parking lot and hook up a socket to it, a 120 volt outlet, um, that's only about $1,500. But that line would tie into the apartment complex's power, and they're not just going to spot you the power. I mean, heck, that could be up to <laughs> 30 or 45 cents a day. They're not just going to give you that. So th after that, they wanted him to have the city hook up a separate meter to it that would be his I guess electric car meter which of course is going to be a ridiculously small amount of power for this usage but this is the kind of red tape that you run into whenever you try and get a little charging station installed in a business or an apartment complex it's just not something they're interested in helping people out with until there's a whole lot of people putting pressure on them for this solution. And I think eventually we will get there and, and electric vehicle charging stations will become ubiquitous. Uh, but for now, having the ability to make your own power, making your own micro power solar power plant can actually be cheaper than paying an electrician, the city to come out to put an extra meter and all that. So can we build an onboard solar charging station on a smart car? Well, the mechanics of solar vehicle charging are such that it works better the more surface area that you have to work with. To understand the numbers behind this, let's take a look at an extreme case. A solar-powered semi-truck uh, pulling a 53-foot trailer. A decent solar panel, uh, what you might find on the roof of a residential array or what's outside the house on the solar car right now, is rated at about 0.13 watts per square inch. Uh, the Sun Eater has 670 watts of panels on it. Uh, its peak power output is about 500 watts. That's because solar panels never produce as much as they're actually rated for. Um, the manufacturer rating for solar panels reflects some kind of perfect conditions that will essentially never actually occur. Um, but you'll get about 70% of what they're rated for, so I get about almost 500 watts out of a 670 watts of paneling. Um, the vehicle makes 3.2 kilowatt hours per day under ideal conditions and that gives me around 15 to 20 miles just from the solar power that I get off the array on the roof. 
Now let's take a look at the um, solar the solar semi truck pulling a 53 foot trailer. I did the calculations for how much mileage we could expect to get from a solar semi tractor trailer using a 1.15 kilowatt hours per mile efficiency. Uh, that figure I got from a paper done on uh, the analysis of long haul battery electric trucks. It was published by the European Federation for Transport and Environment. And I'll put a link to it in the video description above. It's kind of an interesting read. If you're a nerd and interested in, in electric commercial transport. But if you look at a 53 foot long trailer, it's 102 inches by 636 inches. If we put solar panels on the top of that vehicle, that would give us 64,872 square inches for solar. That would come out to about 8,433 watts of paneling, which would give us a peak power output, once again about 70% of that number right there, of about 6 kilowatts. That would give us around 50 kilowatt hours a day, or 40 to 50 miles per day just from the solar which means the uh, the solar semi truck even though it gets only about a fourth of the fuel economy of my Nissan Leaf would be getting two to three times as many miles per day because it's got so much more surface area I've actually had a few people in Europe email me about trying to build a, a solar power station on their uh, Nissan vans, their ENV 200s, and I told them it actually work a lot better on the van than it would on the Leaf, just because they have so much more surface area to work with. Solar powered vehicles work better the larger they are, and the opposite is also true. They're harder to build the less surface area you're working with, and they don't come much smaller than the smart car. Ultimately, in order to achieve 2 kilowatt hours of production, in a package as small as the smart car, you're going to have to get very creative with your roof rack and have probably four 100 watt panels that slide out from a single stack. Having built a couple of roof racks now, I can tell you that building such an assembly that like slide underneath of each other like that, you're gonna, that's, that's a complicated engineering task. Yeah. Will require a significant amount of engineering and machining expertise. So that was the gist of my first solar charging station consult. I tried to accurately inform him of how he could accomplish what he was looking for while being realistic about the hurdles he was going to face. Now onto the vehicle update that I skipped at the beginning of the episode. A few weeks ago in Dallas we had a fairly strong windstorm with gusts of up to 50 miles an hour. The windward side of the vehicle funneled the wind directly upward into the bottom of the roof rack panel tearing it loose from one of the bolts and shearing another one of the securing bolts clean in two. So that sucked. But a hero of mine said something recently that really registered with me. He said, if you're not breaking anything during testing, then your tests are insufficiently rigorous. All right, now let's take a look at those economy V's of the week. Our first economy V of the week is parked in Fremont, California. This is almost a carbon copy of the deal that I got on the Sun Eater, from the price tag of $3,500 to the <laughs> several dents and dings on the exterior. That's fine though. We're not looking for some shiny bobble to park on the strip. We're looking for the cheapest electric vehicle on the planet. What matters isn't the exterior, but the battery. And this one still has seven bars, so it will get you around 60 to 75 miles a day after you install the portable EV charging station on it. And those dents are a Hagler's gold mine too. They've already had it listed for a month, so if you walk onto the dealership with 3,000 even, you could drive off with this car. Our second economy V is brought to us by the good folks at Sands Kia in Arizona. It's a silver 2011 Leaf with 72,000 miles on it. The good folks at Sands Kia are mistaken about a couple of things. One, that a Nissan Leaf runs on gas. It doesn't, and please don't try to pump gas into it. And two, that this vehicle, a six bar leaf with a maximum highway range of about 35 to 40 miles, is worth $4,500. It's not. Normally, I wouldn't even list an overpriced leaf like this in the Economy V section, but the 15 days it's been sitting on the lot, combined with the somewhat pleading call and make me an offer 
line in the ad lets me know that they know they're probably going to be letting go of this Leaf for substantially less. This is the kind of car that I would consider buying and putting a brand new main battery in, selling the pack that's in there now, and putting that money toward a solar charging station. All said and done, we could have a Leaf with a brand new battery and about 100 to 110 mile a day range with the addition of a solar charging station for somewhere around eleven to twelve thousand dollars anyways that's it for the episode i had a lot of fun with my first solar charging station consult we actually charged jose's smart car with the sun eater while it was parked and we were talking shop it was pretty cool to have three different electric vehicles in the driveway at the same time so thanks so much to all you guys and gals for supporting the channel and an extra thank you to my awesome patreon patrons for helping me finance the research and development of these solar and battery range extending stations. I have a ton of ideas for future projects and my Patreons help me bring these to life with 100% of the donations going directly toward parts. See you guys next week for our better roof rack video.